Hello, hi, good morning. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> oh, it's Again. on. It is on. It is on, like Donkey Kong. Not not as on as it was at 4 a.m. this morning, you crazy, crazy bastard. Uh, it was, um, <laughs> I, I'm saying right now it was totally worth it, but we'll see how much that maintains when I'm still lecturing at 8.30 this <laughs> evening. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, welcome to anyone who's joining us or catching the VOD later. Uh, my name's Luke Retellick. Uh, this is Matt, the Game Dad Diet, over on that side. Yep. That's it. Yep. Got my directions right. Left, right. Cool. And uh, we've got a press conference that is just beginning right now. So let's kick it's, over. Yeah, it's jumping right in. Perfectly timed. All right. Much excited. So let's see if my uh, prediction about the heavy metal choir opening things up. That would be awesome. Comes to pass. <laughs> 15 seconds to go. If they don't open with Doom Immortal, I will be shocked. But, uh, they might they might close with Doom Immortal. Yeah, possibly, possibly. Andrew WK first last year though. Yeah. Cheers everybody. Ah. Oh. With a game, there is no game without the players. Really, it all comes down to you. Without you, there is no game. There's no one to play it. No one to interact with it. You keep us in check. <laughs> and we appreciate that. <laughs> Damn right we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, about to say, like, this, this feels and like, let's it, open with an apology. <laughs> it's a little bit like that. Really not afraid to tell <laughs> us how you feel. <laughs> no, we're not afraid to be how we feel. <laughs> this is amazing. Sometimes challenges us, but it forces us to be always challenging ourselves. You empathize with us as developers and with each other as a community. It's really beautiful. I'm Dinga Bakaba, and I used to take a week off every time a Bethesda game came out. My name is Mark Diaz, and when I was eight years old, I used to sneak over to my buddy's but, house to play Doom. But now you motherfuckers mean I don't get any time off. Dead Cell was one of the very first games that got me into the Elder Scrolls world. I'm Dana Christo, and I started out as a 16-year-old gamer who just wanted to bring joy to others through video games. And now I'm game director at Arkane Studios. Now I'm a game programmer at id Software. Now I get to be a part of building that world as the creative director on Elder Scrolls Online. Now I'm a UI programmer at Bethesda Game Studios, and it's everything I could have dreamed of. I see you. I see you. I see you. We see you. Because we are you. And together. 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 We are all. 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 Interesting strategy. I will say though, more than any other um, publisher, Bethesda spends time doing the whole community happy feel good stuff. Yeah. 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 And they do it reasonably well. Reasonably well. Uh, Fallout 76 is probably the one situation where they really fucked that up. Yeah. I'll be really interested to see if they actually announce anything new this year. There must, be, basically... there must be a new IP or, or a newly acquired IP of some sort. Yeah. Because otherwise, I can't list enough things to fill the time with. Yeah. Unless we get yet another Skyrim port. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Entirely possible. Well, actually, I mean, Skyrim on Stadia. <laughs> Please welcome that would be logical. Vice President of Marketing. Pete Hines. So do you think we see Todd Howard this time, or are we going to get a Todd uh, Howard? I, I'd be surprised if he's on stage, honestly. So I don't know what you have to talk about other than, um, here's how we're fixing Fallout 76. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. How are you? Feel good? Awesome. Thank you guys for being here. Thank everyone watching around the world to tuning in to watch our fifth annual E3 showcase. It's true. They've done a lot of these. Mm. 
This is a night dedicated to those who love games, who love the incredible entertainment that games provide. This past year, you fought demons on Mars and Nazis in America. You were assassins in the Empire, adventurers in Tamriel, and survivors, a lot of us, and survivors in the Wasteland. And you've had on on these amazing adventures on PC, console, VR, mobile, or wherever and however you choose to play. And that's the key. You take the worlds that we create and you make them yours. You share your experiences with other players, with friends, and with family. With our games, you've built large global communities that truly matter. This year, we want to give special recognition to the extraordinary Bethesda community. As you, showed, as you saw in our opening video, you mean everything to us. I've almost been at this company for 20 years. Damn. And when I first started... That's a long time, Dad. Stick your game dev. I mean, higher up, but still. When I first started, one of my first responsibilities was moderating the community forums, chatting with you and keeping you up to date on our games. It was a great way to start my career at Bethesda because it was the perfect reminder of why we do what we do. And like so many others at Bethesda, I've spent a lot of time with you at events around the world. I've enjoyed meeting so many of you and getting your thoughts and feedback. So tonight, we'll be taking time throughout the show to hear directly from some of you in the Bethesda community. We are thrilled tonight to show our fans the lineup of great games we've been creating just for you, including the premiere of some exciting new games, and we'll go deep okay. on Doom Eternal. Yes! Tell me what I want to hear, Pete. <laughs> Give it all to me. <laughs> so, if you're ready, let's kick it off and to get an update from our friends at one of the most celebrated development studios in the world, Bethesda Game Studios. Please welcome studio head and my good friend, Todd Howard. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. So no Todd Coward. I like it. I like it. Look, Bethesda's always had a fair bit of balls when it comes to putting yeah. themselves out there. Yeah. Yeah. It would be interesting to see what he has to say. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Great to see everybody. We have had an incredibly exciting year at Bethesda Game Studios. Given some of that excitement, impressed you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah. Humor, Actually, like over the last year, we've had over 60 million players in our games, our most ever. And it's all of you It's all of you who have made these worlds what they are. Take Fallout 76. First thing. <laughs> Bethesda giving zero fucks. A game we'd never done before. Had a lot of difficulties at launch. And we got a lot of well-deserved criticism. I mean, they're owning it, right? Yeah. But like, that, the team it's a good look to come it, out and own it. And you Definitely. kept playing it. And through all of that, something amazing has happened. It's thanks to all of you. This game has one of the best online communities we've ever seen. We made a post apocalyptic survival game where you can do whatever you want, and everybody's nice to each other. <laughs> <laughs> they don't go on killing griefing sprees, they leave food and water for the newbies and wave to each other. I don't know about you. This should give us all hope for humanity when the apocalypse does come. No. <laughs> to you. I, I, don't, I don't believe it. And we have a lot more in store this year for Fallout 76. But first, our latest game, The Elder Scrolls Blades, is an early access. And thanks to all of you, it became our second straight number one mobile game after Fallout Shelter. Absolutely incredible. And to tell you what's coming to Blades, let me introduce project leader Craig Lafferty and art director Matt Carafano. I'm yet to... They've acknowledged 76, but they're going straight to Blades. Interesting. Yeah. Well, it's still owning it, so yeah. I, yeah, no, I applaud that. Yeah. Thanks, Todd. Yeah. It's great to be here at E3. And thanks again to all of you for making Blades number one. 
as someone who's worked on the Elder Scrolls for 20 years, it's been incredible to bring this world to your phones in an all new way. We still love those classic dungeon crawlers, and it's clear you do as well. And whether you're exploring a dungeon or rebuilding your town, it's great to be able to do it wherever you are. Since it's E3, we're releasing our biggest update yet, featuring all new jobs and solo arena battles, an all new custom jewelry system, and a brand new dragon quest line. Yeah. Seems like a fair bit of content for a mobile game. Mm, yeah. It has even more, yeah, it's a hot but bed. best of all, mm. it's coming out tonight. So, download free tonight and give it a try. And we're also hard at work on our arena mode for this fall that'll feature PvP, your own guilds, and visiting your friends' towns. But most exciting this year, we're also bringing Blades to an all-new platform, Switchblades. Oh. Oh. Wow. That's actually a good combo. Like, that game on Switch would work really well. Totally, yeah. Like, that will actually make me play it. <laughs> well, I mean, the whole focus is the mobile nature of it, so that totally yeah. fits, yeah. Cool. What's it rated, actually? That's going to be the question for me, because um, whether my kids will play it or not. Yeah, yeah. What, what was Skyrim? Was Skyrim M? I think it was an M. Yeah. Fantasy violence is usually... Yeah. It's not that bad. Unless it's Marvel. Yes. <laughs> yes, Blaze is coming this fall to the Nintendo Switch, and yes, it's still free. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, wow, okay. That's impressive. Blades is the perfect fit for the Switch. You can play on the go, on your TV, and with motion controls. But best of all, it's cross-play and cross-progression with the mobile version. So you can... Huh. So you can start tonight on mobile, and all your progress will carry over. And it's playable here at E3 in our booth and Nintendo's. Yeah. I wonder if cross-play and cross-progression are going to be the buzzwords of the next six months. And for those of you yeah. playing on mobile, we also Unless have some special rewards mm. for both our Apple well. and Google players this week. <laughs> if they so do, they have to make a big point of it. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Thanks again. <laughs> cool. Now, That's interesting. let me introduce Jeff and Tom to tell you what's coming to Fallout 76. Okay, this will be interesting. Let's, let's see if it's enough to get us back in. Yeah. Because, like, I don't dislike the game. It's just deeply flawed. Mm. <laughs> Hi, I'm project leader Jeff Gardner. <laughs> and I'm well, the director cackle. Tom Mustaine. <laughs> On behalf of everyone at Bethesda Game Studios, we want to thank the millions We're of sorry. you who have played with us, <laughs> stuck with us, and helped shape the world of uh. Fallout 76. <laughs> Absolutely. It's incredible what the game has become. You've told us how much you've loved this year's updates so far, from camp building, legendary weapons, player vending, and of course, the dreaded Sheep Squatch. <laughs> We've also been working on our biggest update yet. It's called Wastelanders. And it will fundamentally change the game. Okay. It's been some time since Vault 76 opened its door. And we all discovered that Appalachia isn't quite what it used to be. We encountered a lot of things. Overcame a lot of things. I don't think any of us expected for people to actually come back. Are you from the vault? Can you help us? Oh, NPCs? Pretty far. Yep, makes sense. Heard there's hope here in Appalachia. Folk rebuilding, fighting back. We'll fight too, right by your side. Antagonist NPCs too, by the look of it. Yeah. We've been everywhere. It's gonna be everything, settlements. Everything. Mm. And the one thing we've learned is this. You gotta claim the wasteland before it claims you. Question is, the hell is that? Are you That's with us? Creepy. With them? Oh, it's factions. 
choice and consequence. Interesting. I mean, uh, I wanted a Fallout RPG with 76, so... That was the biggest bit of feedback besides all the yeah. broken shit that they got. So That's right. That's right. Human NPCs are coming to Fallout 76. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we know they should have been there for launch, but we're getting there eventually. <laughs> but a full quest line, new rewards, and as you saw, full dialogue trees. That aren't delivered to us via PC terminals. This is a long-term <laughs> story we're telling. It's good. Year one was about the vault doors opening and all of you settling the wasteland. Year two is about people coming back to reclaim it. Like previous Fallout games, these characters have their own stories and goals. It's up to you to choose how to interact with them and live with those consequences. Cool. The Wastelanders update is coming this fall and will be free for all Fallout 76 players. I mean, that looks interesting. I'll, I'll definitely give it a shot when it comes out. It's sounding like a very similar trajectory to CFDs. something these. special yeah. just for E3. Fallout 76 is going to have a free trial for everyone starting tomorrow. That's right. It's that's right. It's the perfect time to see what Fallout 76. I mean, and it's great. They've already been trying to become. give away coffees. We can't so. wait to welcome all of you. <laughs> and, it, and if it's not them and giving them away, it's other stores. So many of yeah. you are going to be joining us. We thought we'd also give you a sneak peek this week at an all-new game mode. Check it out. This would be the arena combat one, I'm sure. Oh, new vault, okay. Your first test was making it to the vault. Now, your real trial begins. Currently, there is no overseer of Vault 51. Perhaps you will be the one. I think I've spoken about this one before. We are in serious mm. need of leadership. So I have devised a unique process of elimination. A, a battle to the death is the only sure way. It's a battle royale mode for it. Yeah. This should prove interesting. Yeah. Fire instead of the blue ring. Yeah. Yep. I mean, it's a neat idea, and it works well with the game. You'll have hostile creatures as well, though. Mm. Oh, hang on. Looks a little bit more co-op than I would have expected. I, I, I guess it would be still like squad base. Mm. There can only or maybe it's just two factions. Here. Yeah, Good maybe. Luck. Okay. That's pretty interesting. With all of the um, beasties in there as well, I wonder if by killing them that'll give you a significant boost yeah. during yeah, the game. We put a battle royale in Fallout 76. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear winner is a battle royale <laughs> born from the Fallout universe. From power armor to perk cards, from camp building to contending with wasteland creatures, and of course, my, my personal favorite, nukes. It's a great free addition to an already huge game. We love playing it, and we think you will too. <laughs> <laughs> that well, one really excited so you in the crowd. The, sneak yeah, the one that they totally paid thing. for. <laughs> Remember, yeah. all of Fallout 76, including Nuclear Winter, is free to try this week on all platforms. Oh. So jump in tomorrow. We can't wait to see you. Thanks again. Bethesda coming in strong so far. Yeah. Remember, Completely owned everything we've talked out. about that's coming this year is free. We get to represent hundreds of passionate developers 
across four studio locations in North America working on multiple projects. Yes, we're still hard at work on our next-gen RPG, Starfield, and of course, Elder Scrolls VI. We know how precious these game worlds are to all of you, and they are to us. We know the time you spend in them is important. Keep telling us what you love, what you'd like to see us do better. Thank you again, everybody, for your support, but really, even more so, I want to thank everybody for believing in us. Thank you. Just the right amount of humble. Yeah. Please welcome the founder of Tango Gameworks, Mr. Shinji Mikami. Tango. What do we know them from? Tango. I'm looking it up. Let's check. Tango. Hello. Evil within. Like oh, cool. My team in it's probably Tokyo. about time for another one of those. It's Monday morning there, but they are watching. There's <laughs> that really excited guy again. <laughs> I am excited to announce the next game from Tango Ghost Wire Tokyo. Oh. Okay, it's a new IP. Or I assume it's a new IP. Sounds like it. It is an action adventure game in which you will fight paranormal enemy and rid the city of a supernatural evil. I think you love it. <laughs> To tell you more about Ghostwire Tokyo, here is the creative director at Tango, Ikumi Nakamura. Yay! <laughs> Horror movies and wow. Japan do go together wow, wow, wow. pretty well. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So many people. Wow. Thank you. Arigato <laughs> That crowd. <laughs> yeah, man, she's all Japanese and shit. This is awesome. <laughs> makes me nervous. I'll do my best to speak in English. <laughs> uh, we are making a new kind of action adventure game. It's spooky. <laughs> but not the survival horror game that we are known for. People are vanishing in Tokyo. You must find out why. You will encounter conspiracies and the occult. You have to, you have to explore the world, face challenges to uncover the truth and save humanity. In the game, you will meet spirits, some dangerous, some are peaceful. <laughs> <laughs> And survivors I love this. each have their yeah, it's great. stories. You will need to ask yourself, is this normal or paranormal? I ask myself this question every time I go to the office. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. She's way just more relaxed kidding, on stage than the other two guys. Yeah, yeah. We are very excited. Let's take a look. Meet the net. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to predict this right now that Christian will love whatever this is. <laughs> oh. Question is, does the in game look that good? Yeah, I was just thinking that. Is this pre rendered or in game? Mm. I'm guessing it's pre rendered since. Oh, they wow. Oh, wow, they're working about people vanishing. Quite literally just gone. Yep. This is uh, Thanos snapping all over again. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, disintegrating people is big right now. Let's cash in on it. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, the main character has a bow. Oh, this looks really cool. Whoa. Don't fear the unknown. Attack it. That looks really cool. Sick. I'm down. Yep, totally. There are so many good horror sort of, yeah. uh, you know, history tropes that they can use from Japanese mm -hmm. culture. When I'm not playing Bethesda games, I work as a mechanical engineer. I work in a hospital. I used to work with kids. Uh, I'm an electrician. I'm an event planner. In real life, I'm a systems administrator. Program assistant for a private school for children with autism. I'm trying to be an artist. I like to think of myself as one. Make like back-end systems that, it, it's, it's really boring. <laughs> Maybe permanently or temporarily, I'm a full-time streamer. I got, a, I got a YouTube channel. I make my own yarn. I'm a social worker. Teaching uh, inmates. I'm a game developer. <laughs> the guy's teaching him mates has blood <laughs> all over so him. <laughs> I remember being in the eighth grade and uh, a buddy of mine giving me the shareware demo on you know, three and a half inch floppy disks. My older brother picked up Fallout 3 and I took his copy and played it when he wasn't home. Fallout 4, oh my gosh, that's like my baby. The scope of that game was just like a lot bigger than things I was used to. Just setting foot in Shimmering, the first city that you go to in Somerset, it was amazing. You would look out and you'd be like, oh, I want to go there. And then you could go there, which was wild. Go out into the world, you go in any direction that you want to go. The exploration and the weirdness and the alienness of it. I played Oblivion. I, I tell you, it probably saved my life. It was one of my first experiences with a fantasy world that was that immersive. Love the dragons, scatter the dragons. You take down a dragon, you can definitely take down any illness. Don't ever stop adding dragons to your game. Add dragons to Fallout, add dragons to Rage, add dragons to Ep <laughs> Mecha, Mecha Dragon. Preferably not creatures oh, using the exact same dragon skin, though. <laughs> Please welcome studio director at ZeniMax Online Studios, Matt Fyroar. A lot of people are very excited about Elder Scrolls Online. It's interesting. Yeah. I know it's really actually picked up recently. I, I really need to check it out. Oh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Th thank you, everyone. Wow. Thank you. Yeah! And <laughs> <laughs> that one, that one dude. <laughs> I just want to. I just want to shout out to our calm friend down. Greg there, the one in the video that really loves dragons. I'm happy to say, Greg, The Elder Scrolls Online has dragons. Yeah! You remember the um, Skyrim lady from a few years back that just cut sick every time they said <laughs> right the now, game fact, name? Players are deep into the season of the dragon. Our year-long story about greed, revenge, cat people, and of course, dragons. Yeah! Tonight's focus on the community resonates with me and everyone at ZeniMax Online Studios because ESO literally would not exist without you. Watching you play the game, streaming, telling stories, hearing your feedback, we understand that you are the most important part of the world of Tamriel. Thank you. Thank you for making ESO the extraordinary adventure it is today. The past year has been a huge success for ESO. More Game of the Year awards, millions more players have joined. Yeah! So, so many, in fact, that we Dude, recently- shut up. So many, in fact, that we recently <laughs> added more server capacity just to support all the new players in Tamriel. Oh my God. <laughs> ESO, ESO just uh. keeps getting bigger and better. Just a few days ago, we launched the Elder Scrolls Online elsewhere. The latest chapter. 
the latest chapter in the game where you're able to visit for the first time the homeland of the Khajiit, as well as control the dead as the new necromancer class. And if, if you haven't played it yet, Elsewhere is the perfect starting point for new players. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. When we announced Season of the Dragon, we kicked it off by showing you a video about how dragons were unleashed on Elsewhere, and we ended with a cliffhanger. Now, I'm really excited to show you what happens next. Check out the world premiere. The trailer for it, when they first released it, really good. All of the Elder Scroll Online cutscenes have looked phenomenal, yeah. yeah. I just question whether the in-game looks anywhere near as good. Yeah, it, it looks like an Elder Scrolls game. Mm. Yeah, this is an image we haven't seen too many times this year. Mm. It's funny that the least believable part of all of this is that the horses don't just shit themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I love how well animated this Khajiit is, though. Like, Hell especially yeah. the eyes. So that must be the Necromancer. Yeah. Damn, strong skeleton. Or is that skeleton supposed to be the actual dude? I think it might be, maybe. Yeah. No, yeah. He transformed himself into a skeleton. They totally botched the shot and spear the cat person to the dragon. <laughs> I, I love the the whole like it feels like a D and D group, you know, like doing oh, a, a totally. counter. Absolutely, it's really good. With a whole lot less planning and arguing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If, this, if that was a D&D encounter, that would have been at least two hours before the fighting began. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. There would be a lot more drinking in the bar while the dragon burns it. And, and dick jokes. Yeah. Tons and tons <laughs> of dick right. jokes. Another cliffhanger. You may have recognized the return of Sai Sahan, yeah. the legendary Redguard Swordmaster. He's the legendary Redguard Swordmaster you met as part of the original Five Companions. 
He's back as the leader of the Dragon Guard, a group, a, a group of dragon right. warriors you've seen Settle in the Dragon Scrolls game. Settle down. Yeah, It'll enough. Be featured in our fourth quarter story DLC named Dragon Hold, <laughs> which will complete the season of the dragon. We've got a lot more to share about the return of Sai and the Dragon Guard, which will unveil at QuakeCon later this summer. Before then, keep an eye out for a dungeon DLC adventure called Scalebreaker, which you'll yeah! see in August. That one guy's being paid by the screen. <laughs> I, I, don't, I actually don't think he's paid for Thank now because he wouldn't be so interrupting if that was the case. The no, no, he's being very We're disruptive. We're humbled by your enthusiasm. Yeah. Your enthusiasm for the game motivates us every day. You guys are seriously awesome. Thank you. They just need to get Marty Stratton and Hugo Martin out. They will give no fucks about the crowd. <laughs> but I have something else to talk about. The Elder Scrolls Online isn't the only game in development at ZeniMax Online Studios. We have several other projects, one of which we're ready to reveal tonight. And to tell us all about it is the game's creative director, Kira Schlitt. Hi, everyone. And now, for something completely different. Imagine a classic Saturday morning cartoon in free-to-play mobile game form. Let's take a look. That is completely different. That is completely different. Commander Kane, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Holy shit! That's amazing! Commander Kane! Commander Kane! When evil comes from outer space to terrorize the human race, the Keens will help in up real quick and make a beat so the whole go stick! <laughs> <laughs> wow, I did not expect a return of Commander Keen. They know their target audience too, because that's people who were playing that game about so, twenty a new plus plan. years yeah. ago. Commander Keen's or family more. tree. Probably thirty They're actually. To iOS and yeah. Android. If you're hearing about Commander Keen for the first time, it was one of the first PC action games created by id Software in the early 90s. Yeah. <laughs> it starred boy genius Billy Blaze, whose alter ego Commander Keen if you say protected so. Earth. <laughs> <laughs> All of us at ZeniMax Online Studios want to give a really big thanks to our friends at id for trusting us to deliver our modern take on this classic game. <laughs> So, tonight, as we introduce Commander Keen to a new generation of players, we're also introducing the next generation of heroes. Meet Billy. And Billy. No. Twin geniuses who follow in their famous father's footsteps. The new commanders are, of course, funny and powerful, but the game is also full of enemies, allies, and some really bad bad guys. The twins build wacky gadgets from household items to save the Earth from certain alien destruction, drag and drop gadgets to summon allies, attack enemies, and move through the environment. Choose from a caboodle of contraptions to conquer challenges. And try saying that five times fast. The twins go on adventures in story mode, which tell some of the classic Commander Keen tales, as well as a whole bunch of brand new ones. In story mode, you'll overcome aliens, collect power-ups, and explore Mars and beyond. You can also go helmet to helmet with other players in battle mode, a real-time head-to-head race through an alien landscape where you need to control checkpoints and claim the flag to gain ultimate victory. Okay, that could be fun. Commander Keen will looks, soft launch cute. this like, summer it's a, it's a mobile on game, iOS right? Like, it's kind of what I expected it to look like. <laughs> I just love how they're 
Digging deep into the Commander Keen lore. So, please go <laughs> All these classic Commander Keen stories. Pre-register to receive unique in-game rewards and hot Commander Keen launch updates. We really can't wait to kick some asteroid with you all. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I mean, I probably won't play it, but, like, somebody out there will. It, 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 interesting that ZeniMax Online's making them. Mm. Thank you, Kira. At Bethesda, we, like you, love mobile games. In addition to Blades and the upcoming Commander Keen, millions of you have enjoyed Fallout Shelter, which has now reached over 150 million downloads and counting. It's insane how popular that yeah. game is. For fans of collectible card games, we brought the Elder Scrolls Legends to mobile so you could experience the Elder Scrolls in a new way. This year, the Legends community has continued to grow thanks to a lot of upgrades, new features, and new content. It's a great experience for a night of gaming or a quick match over a cup of coffee. It totally happens every time I play Hearthstone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Every time. It's really fucking annoying. Cool looking set, though. It, I mean, clearly a lot of effort's gone into this. It's unfortunate that it's wasted on this game. <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't be so mean. Oh, look, I dig it. I think it's cool. It's definitely cool. I mean, how, how else are you going to show a mobile card game without just showing the screen, which is not that interesting. Yeah. This, is, this is cool. <laughs> and like I say, it's a lot of effort that's got into this set. Mm. Make your play. on fire. Yep. Happening a lot this year. Mm. <laughs> Tis the season. Climate change is actually dragons. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't... Oh, my God. See? Dragon. I don't know if that'd be better or worse. <laughs> if you enjoy other card games but are looking for something that provides a little deeper challenge, you can download Legends for free on the App Store and begin playing tonight. Legends' next expansion, Moons of Elsewhere, will be available on June 27th for PC, Mac, mobile, and tablet. You can head over to BethesdaNet to get a glimpse at the new cards and content, or play it this week in our booth. I'll see you there, clapping. <laughs> <laughs> They're going hard on the um, Elsewhere stuff. Speaking of new yeah. content, three weeks ago, we released Rage 2. And now Insanity Rules... <laughs> and now Insanity Rules for millions of players around the world. But we wanted to do more than just deliver a critically acclaimed open-world shooter. We've already added community challenges that reward you just for having fun in the wasteland, and we've got a lot more planned with new features rolling out this week. The world of Rage 2 will become even more unpredictable and even more insane. Take a look. Mm -hmm. The marketing team on Rage is fucking great. Mm. <laughs> this is a very Fallout vibe, though. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Is this the Full House theme, or have they actually just adapted it? It's that adapted. Mm. 
Yeah, it's a death. Okay. New faction. Now I miss the taste of flesh. Oh, that's my next tattoo. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, miny, mech. Nice. Awesome. I got a tremendous surprise for you all. I'm flying. <laughs> I do need to give it some more time. It's always good to see um, significant chunks of extra content added to single player games though oh yeah yeah definitely please welcome executive Ooh. producer at machine games new blood yerk gustav young blood young blood not you blood. <laughs> so many bloods much blood hello everyone after liberating america from the nazi scum in wolfenstein 2 the new colossus which is a phenomenal game. This year, we take you back to Europe with two new Wolfenstein games. Two? First, we oh, are the VR one. Nazi killing oh, into yeah. virtual reality with... Cyberpilot, yeah. With Wolfenstein Cyberpilot. As a hacker working for the French resistance, you will take control of Nazi war machines and turn them against their creators. Cyberpilot will be available this July, and it's playable this week in our E3 booth. Well, July's pretty soon. And if you haven't fought Nazis in VR, you don't know what you are missing. <laughs> but, as I said, we have two new Wolfenstein games. This summer, we are going to be launching Wolfenstein Youngblood. <laughs> With a gameplay experience that is bigger than any previous Wolfenstein game. Really? You will have more weapons mm. and weapon upgrades than ever before, more ways to customize your playstyle, and, of course, even more evil Nazis to kill. <laughs> <laughs> and in Youngblood, you can kill those Nazis with a friend. Yeah, this is the bit that really appeals to me. Yeah. Co-op Wolfenstein. Yes, Wolfenstein is going co-op. Youngblood is set in the 1980s, Two decades after the new Colossus, B.J. Blazkowicz is missing in Nazi-occupied Paris, and it's up to his twin daughters, Jess and Soph, to track him down. In Youngblood, you can still play by yourself, or you can partner with a pal to double up on shooting, stabbing, and killing Nazis. Check it out. I'm not sure about what the message is here, Matt. Do you think it's got something to do with hurting Nazis? I don't know. It seems really political. I think they should repeat it a couple of times just to make sure. <laughs> that's where Papa is, so that's where we're going. We can find him okay. together. I may have an assignment suitable for two Nazi killers such as yourselves. One of the things that this makes me the most curious about is when they pick up with Wolfenstein 3, whether it's going to be pre or post this game in terms of the story. Yeah. Oh, jeez. That's a lot of stabbing. Mm. <laughs> Stewardesses. Oh, 
100% want to play this co-op all the way through, though. Oh, yeah. It's a really good game format for that sort of thing, I think. Yeah. I'm always a sucker for seeking the music up to the gunfire. Yeah. Just enjoy life for a second, Jess. <laughs> yeah, July 26th, that's not far off. I'll this definitely play it. Yeah. Yeah. It releases on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch. That's definitely a stream or two. PC on July 26th. Uh, and if you can't wait, stop by our E3 booth to play this week. Thank you. I didn't expect it to be that big a game, though. Like, it seemed like it was yeah. going to be uh, like an and expansion. Now, yeah. I like to well, I mean, a standalone one, but yeah. My dear friends yeah. from Arcane Leon, who worked with us on these two Wolfenstein games, <coughs> Dinga and Sebastian. We love you too. <laughs> the dude on the left was in that intro video. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Hi, I'm Dinga Bakaba, and game director at Arcane Lyon. Bonsoir, I'm Sébastien Miton, art director in the same studio. <laughs> so, along with partnering with our good friends at Machine Games on Wolfenstein, we've been working on other projects at Arcane Lyon. And tonight, we're excited to announce our latest first-person action game. It's something mm. innovative, stylish, and different from anything we've done before. So no Nazis. Let me begin by saying bienvenue to the frozen island of Black Reef. This is a place of mystery where our looks can kill. The game takes place during what we say in French is a period de folie, a time of madness. And now that we've given you a small taste of the world, let us introduce you to our two deadly rivals, Colt and Juliana. Okay, so the game is not that art style we just saw. This place isn't a paradise. It's a prison. Out here... Out here... We're trapped. We're free. In this endless, eternal cycle. Life's purpose is on this island. And I can't let this go on any longer. The more days I repeat, the longer that I'm out here, the more certain I am of what I have to do. The only way to protect the cycle, the only way to break the cycle, is, is to, to kill, kill you. you. So it's like a Groundhog Day. Yeah. PvP. Time is on my side. Deathloop. Cool. Is it multiplayer? It looks like me. It, it, it seems to be heavily indicated. That's what it is. Surely it would have to be. Yeah. 
<laughs> De <laughs> Deathloop combines a mind-bending story with meticulously designed levels and, of course, arcane signature gameplay that lets you approach every situation any way you like. Because in the endless clash between these two extraordinary assassins, how you play is up to you. Plus, I think it's really fucking cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love this guy. Excuse my French. <laughs> yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe you should have said that in French, actually. Maybe, maybe not. But, but, it's also pretty fucking true. Ah. Yeah, because <laughs> <laughs> because we, we will take you on a trip unlike any other. And we really hope that you enjoy the ride. Merci beaucoup. Thank you very much. I, I don't know if it's multiplayer. Maybe, it, yeah. It's a wonderful way to get... How, how could it not be, though? I mean... Pressures in hmm. life. Well, I mean, like, it, it, Arcane's never really, really done multiplayer that as a way. Person, I'm typically very no, but they pitched it as assassin versus assassin. Building. Yeah, me out of and if shell, one of them's a pure AI assassin, like then hero and do all these things. you find I mean, unless you've got the choice of each character and you could play as one or the other against the AI. Yeah. Maybe. Only known yeah. as a character. Probably. See, it would seem like a massive missed opportunity <laughs> if that was the case, though. In real life. The games that you mm. um, bring out. Just, I, I would dig people. like a, a PvP sort of shooter like, like that, war, which is where it's not just your standard thing, like if you're doing, say, like an Overwatch 1v1 match, but you've got like all of the tools and gadgets of an assassin at your disposal to set traps and lay in ways and do stealth shit and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. That would, like, weird tech and that kind of thing. That'd be amazing. Destructible environments, because it looked like there was a little bit of that in the clip, whether that's just part of the video or not. Who's yeah, LGBT. I'd be it, all about it'd be that. interesting, like, because you know, they, they're talking about the story and everything. Like, if that's an ongoing so linear story, storyline has some sort like, of emotional. How does that pan out? So, mm. be, yeah, I, I'm, I'm interested, really but I'm curious as to how exactly the multiplayer the will work. Of making these big yeah. worlds with these amazing stories. Hmm. Building these fantastic worlds and telling these stories comes from a passion to deliver the very best experiences for our players. Hi, I'm James Altman, Director of Publishing at Bethesda. Oh. And I'm Robert Duffy, Chief Technology Officer at id Software. Tonight we have some exciting new technology to sh show you that can dramatically improve gaming for millions. So for the past Ooh. two decades, accessibility we've stuff maybe? game development Sounds accessibility. not by looking at what is possible today, but with a vision of what can be possible tomorrow. And at Bethesda, we're proud of our legacy of innovation, where again and again we've changed the industry. We were the first to use physics-based engines for sports games. We were groundbreakers with go anywhere, do anything, open world RPGs. <coughs> we are the inventors oh, of the hang first on. person is this shooter, a new engine? which is now the world's most popular oh, game. This is what they're going to talk about, um, maybe Starfield and Elder Scrolls being yeah. on. Yeah. We are pioneers in downloadable content and the first to bring mods to consoles. And actually, since we first brought mods it's to Id consoles in and Bethesda together there on stage, have been one yeah, billion mod downloads for Fallout and Skyrim. We, of course, developed the first commercially viable VR technology revealed in our E3 booth in 2012. Yes, that is the original VR headset held together by tape and worn by our very own Tim Willits. And, of course, we are well known as developers of best-in-class engine technology with our id Tech engine. In a, in, <laughs> Innovation and creativity is in our DNA, and all of these advances were done with one goal in mind, to improve player experiences. So tonight, we have exciting new technology to announce. We're going to show you the result of years of research and development. Cutting edge game engine based technology we've developed specifically for game streaming. Now we'd Ooh. like to introduce you to Orion. Oh. Okay. Orion is a tremendous breakthrough in streaming technology. 
It is our name for a group of patented technologies that optimize game engines for performance in a cloud environment. Orion can work with any game engine and will improve player experiences no matter which game you're playing or whether you're streaming on Stadia, on xCloud, or another streaming platform. So, how does Orion work? The exciting game streaming services you've been hearing so much about have largely focused on hardware solutions to address the complex challenges of streaming. That was a lot of words. <laughs> uh, we used our expertise in developing game engine software and took a different approach. By incorporating Orion technology at the game engine level, we we're able to stream game content up to 20% faster per frame, leading to a dramatic reduction in latency. In addition, an Orion-enabled game can stream with up to 40% lower bandwidth. Oh. And happily, for game developers, Orion technology is easy to integrate with your game build with our SDK. But what does that mean for you? It means that streaming games will be faster and better with Orion. And Orion substantially reduces the cost of streaming for players and for publishers. So it won't matter if your friends and family are sucking up all the bandwidth or if you live far away from a data center. With Orion, you'll still be able to stream your game at max settings. Wow. It, it sounds interesting. Mm. Now, as with any new computer technology, one, mass, one must ask the question, can it play Doom? <laughs> <laughs> Good question. Can it stream an unrelenting, fluid, first-person shooter with native 4K resolution at 60 frames per second? Let's see. <laughs> I'd like to introduce... I'd like to introduce Shale Williams, tech specialist from id Software, who is showing you just that here, live on stage. So Shale is streaming an Orion-enabled Doom 2016 right now to that mobile device. As you can see, there is no reduction in visual fidelity. That does look really good. That's Doom. That looks actually really good. At 60 really frames per second <coughs> without perceptible latency. And we want you all to experience this powerful streaming technology yourself as, as we test and refine it. So for a chance to be among the first in the world to stream Doom 2016 for free, all you need to do is join the Doom Slayers Club by registering at slayersclub.com tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Already done it. <laughs> Already there. What are you, new? <laughs> Everybody could use a little more Doom in their lives. Yeah! And we'll see you in hell. <laughs> Here we go. What you are <coughs> here with now is bigger than you can imagine. If you continue, you will bring down the heavens wrath. Oh. It is written. It is their time to give penance. You are but one man. <laughs> they are no longer your people to save. Hell yes. That looks really good. I'm loving the music. That makes it sound like the Doom Slayer might be going up against fucking heaven. Yeah, that's exactly like, the, <laughs> the impression I'm getting. Like... Like a corrupted version of it. 
Yeah. Where heaven is not what humanity expects it to be. <laughs> like it's always been fucked up kind of thing. Marty and awesome. Hugo. That's awesome. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I'm Marty Stratton, the executive producer of Doom Eternal. And I'm... Thank you. And I'm Hugo Martin, the game's creative director. As you just saw, we're not just building a world for Doom, it's an entire universe. Earth is on the brink of annihilation. It's being consumed by demons, and your crusade to save it will take you across dimensions to locations dimensions. never seen before okay. in Doom, from heaven and hell to the Sentinel homeworld and beyond. Yeah. I suppose hell's a dimension. Makes sense, yeah. Yeah, yeah. There is so much to see and discover, but Doom is first and foremost about gameplay, and Doom Eternal promises to be the ultimate power fantasy. The fun comes from mastering the experience because you are the doom slayer, the strongest, fastest demon killer in existence, and nothing can stand in your way. Absolutely. Of course, the challenge in Doom is all about handcrafted combat, but also engaging level design. And in Doom Eternal, the game always has something to new to throw at you, even deep into the campaign. Let's take a look. Ooh. Nice transition. Yeah. What the? Big question mark. Yeah, it, that's a little too video gamey for me. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Fred Smith. It's looking a lot more um, 3D Metroidvania though. Yeah. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. Ooh. Looks good. Mm. Yep. Thanks. Those fire pylons you know, sort of moving around reminded so me of a Mario Maker level. I did software yeah. that every <laughs> aspect of the gameplay has real meaning to you, the player. Every enemy is different, every weapon has a purpose, and every decision you make really counts. The only path to victory in Doom Eternal <clears throat> is to aggressively control the fight with amazing agility, powerful guns, and critical resources. That's right, I'll tell you, we absolutely can't wait for you to play it. When? Some of you won't have to wait too long. If you are lucky enough to be in the room tonight, yeah. <laughs> you'll have a chance to play it immediately following the show. Yeah. <laughs> And for those not here, but at E3 this week, we'll have Doom Eternal playable in the Bethesda booth all week. Yeah. But enough talk. Let's see how it all comes together and watch as this perfect killing machine goes to work. Yep. So the very end of the first um, campaign of Doom 2016, the Doom Slayer got warped to somewhere in the galaxy. So I'm assuming he's going to start off on a different planet and have to work his way back to Earth.
you. As if the imps weren't annoying enough, we gave them wings. <laughs> Jesus. I fucking love that. Smack your kid down between shoulders. Yeah. What is that? This must be quite far in. Yeah. They got big selection of weapons already. So. Yeah. Well, one of the ones that I noticed he picked up as soon as he walked in was the one that um, he gets given by one of those UAC officers in the yeah. clip that they showed at QuakeCon. Because they make a big deal then of him getting that weapon. I assume that's when he picks it up in the campaign. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> ah, so you shot the gun off the back of it specifically. The um, enemies seem a lot faster. Yeah. So one of my concerns with um, like all the platforming stuff that they've added, like I think that sort of stuff's great, but I don't want it to break the momentum because that's what Doom's all about, like the continuous yeah. combat momentum. It should add fuel momentum. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I mean, the grappling hook does a great job of that. Mm-hmm. Oh, those lava flows in the background. How good does that look? That looks really good. Minotaur? Looks like a former Doom Slayer. Sick. That wow, looks good. Thanks. Sick. <laughs> All right. That was classic. Uh, yeah, that, that was awesome. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited because the gameplay that you just saw is just a piece of what you're going to play this week at E3. Yeah. But I bet a lot of you are wondering, when do we get to play Doom Eternal at our home? Well, August. you don't have to wait too much longer. Tomorrow. Not quite tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but Doom Eternal will release on November 22nd. Aww. Uh, that's not too far off. Right? So, yeah, it's not too far. November's looking stacked now. We're yeah. very excited we've got about that. And we've got Death something Stranding. really special for Doom fans. There's something else massive in November, too. We're really Holy shit. Yeah. That looks awesome. Yeah. That's, a, that's an actual helmet. Yeah, <laughs> we, you, you, could wear, you could wear that thing. <laughs> I'll put it next to my Halo helmet. Fuck yes. Holy moly. <laughs> that is awesome. Just as well it's in November, because I'm going to have to save my pennies for this that's thing. right. Already okay, badass. Bethesda, already please, for the love of God, don't <laughs> fuck that thing up. All right, yes. well, we've got one more thing. <laughs> well, the fact that I've actually got one on the floor gives me a bit of confidence. Our totally yeah. new Doom multiplayer experience. We call it Battle Mode. We've been developing this in-house at id, and it's unlike anything you've played before. Yeah, 
We've been so pumped, Edid, to share this with you. This is pure doom, but with your friends, where two player-controlled demons take on one fully loaded slayer in a fight to the death. This is a first-person fighter. So who plays the slayer? Demon strategy versus slayer skill. You know, we can't wait because we know you'll love the different play styles of the various demons because each has unique it's movements, not like 2v1, attacks, basically. and abilities. Okay. They can even spawn AI demons to control the battlefield and help you take down the Slayer. Okay. It's strategic, competitive, and it's a ton of fun. And we can't wait to share more details with you this year at QuakeCon. That's right, a lot more to share at QuakeCon. But before we go, we do want to take a first look at Doom Eternal's new multiplayer. On behalf of our amazing team at ID in Dallas and Frankfurt, Germany, we want to thank you all so much for your support. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Sounds like a little bit of an extension on the um, invasion mode stuff that they showed before. Mm. Instead of doing it into the game levels, it's just a multiplayer arena. Yeah. Fight. So how many people are going to spawn into this game and just re-log if they don't get the Slayer? Slayer yeah, right. Critical. Slayer killed. Round two. <laughs> Final round. Fight. I mean, the environments are a lot more interesting than um, the multiplayer in Doom 2016. Mm. Like, just industrial gantries and tunnels and stuff. There's only so much of that you can stand before it just gets very samey. Yeah. Another round of applause, please, for Marty Hugo and all of our presenters tonight. And for everyone at our studios around the globe that have worked so hard in the great games you've seen tonight, we say thank you. 2019 marks 25 years of Doom. So to celebrate, we will be going all out with Doom at QuakeCon this summer. We're adding a whole host of panels and activities dedicated to Doom, which we call DoomCon. <laughs> Yeah, see what we did there? We took out the quake and put Doom in. Well, you hope Genius. you can come hang out with us in Dallas at our inaugural <laughs> event in London. If you can't, please tune in online. Until then, go to Bethesda.net for more info on all the games you saw tonight. If you're here at E3 this week, we'll have hands-on with many of our games, so be sure to stop by our booth. In the meantime, thanks for playing, thanks for watching, and thanks to all of you for being part of the Bethesda community. Have a great night. It wasn't bad. Yeah, it's definitely better than I expected it to be. Yeah, sure. yeah, for sure. But the true hero is. Bethesda don't usually do the one more thing. It's like we hand Especially you this not after video play, like this. and you do these extraordinary yeah. things that we never could have imagined. We get to build these worlds and these communities, and you all come in and you play, and you bring these worlds that we create to life. You help us build richer worlds. You add meaning to everything. I liked we do. all of the presenters we are glad you're a lot this year. So glad you're here. To the yeah, heroes. they all had a good energy. Bye. To the heroes. And um, I don't have a drink. All to you. appeared quite genuinely invested. Mm, yeah. Not a lot of shilling, a lot of, you know, we actually give a shit about what we're making kind of vibes. <laughs> Commander Keen did not see that coming. Commander Keen came back is weird. <laughs> I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it doesn't mean a huge amount. It's just a fun thing, but... Yeah. That is a name I have not heard in a long time.
That's so we're done. Yeah. So um, that all up went for just over an hour, by the look of it. Hour hour twenty. Yeah, I would say that that for the most part is an hour fairly well used. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, mm. I, I I kind of expect them to use a lot of time um to talk about Doom, mm. but that was like pretty much thirty minutes of just straight Doom. <laughs> yeah, true. I I mean, yeah, they kind of refer to it very very briefly up front, but um. Like, I mean, my prediction of them opening hard with Doom like they did with Rage last year, I was way off on that. They op- they effectively opened with Fallout 76, which I thought was insane. Mm. Ballsy yeah. as hell. But, um, I mean, for anyone who still gives a damn about that game or is planning to give a damn about it again, I think that was a very good um, sort of boost of confidence. Com- I mean, Absolutely. compared to your E3, uh, and I guess the timelines are not the same here because Anthem's a lot fresher in people's memories, but, you know, compared to um, EA who effectively run their um, their non-conference and virtually don't mention Anthem at all, um, mm. you know, instead, this is a really good example of how to own your mistakes. And yeah, yeah. I mean, just despite... Todd Howard sort of coming out and saying, um, you know, you, you, you've been quite voracious in providing feedback. And I, I can't remember what quip he made, but it didn't seem like a, an a ingenuine kind of uh, making light of something that actually they knew that they should yeah. properly own. So, yeah. They made, it, they made it entirely clear that they know they fucked up, mm. right? Um, the, the question is, can they back that up with action, you know? Yeah. Because, um, like, Fallout 76, I think, has a long way to go to kind of be rescued. But certainly adding in NPCs and adding some of that, you know, classic Fallout actual RPG elements, like that that definitely goes away to to doing that. So Yeah, for sure. We'll have to see how that pans out. With actual consequences for your actions too, which is cool. So just just like Bethesda, I guess they've learned. Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> Super true. What, what I'm wondering now, though, and this is something that I, I've it sprung into my mind watching you um, replay um, OG Fallout, like not that long mm. ago, is I wonder now if some of your um, stats, like particularly around your charisma and intelligence oh, yeah. and that sort of thing, will play into some of those NPC interactions you have. Yeah, because mm. charisma, charisma in Fallout 76 was really underutilized it was basically for for groups and such but mm. then you're relying on people to play with to to really benefit from that stat totally so that that will play in now a lot more with um npcs and everything and mm. and given the fact that you know fallout was always about like pick your side you know pick a faction to to change the way the game ends like if that's not a thing in fallout 76 i'll be really surprised mm. Mm. so well i mean what are, what are the main factions that we tend to see in a lot of the fallout games you had the um uh, Steel Brotherhood. Yeah, yeah. I mean, th- I'm sure there's going to be a few. They haven't been the same every game, though, have they? They've, there's been a bit no. of var- variation. Yeah. There's there's a couple that they add in every now and then, but like Steel Brotherhood certainly won. Um, there's uh, I forget the I forget the faction that's basically like a continuation of government. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're assholes. Like, they're, they're, yeah, there's a couple of there's a couple of different factions that they added in. Um, they have it, you know, in every Fallout game, pretty much. Um, and whether or not they show up is a is a question. But mm. um, yeah, I mean, we we know Brotherhood of Steel is in the region. Yeah, totally. Because um, there's so- a bit of reference to them in some of those um, yeah. vid um, docs. So yeah, so uh, like I would imagine they will come back. Mm. Um, but it seems also like you know a lot of it's just going to be settlers, you know, and the, just different groups of settlers won't get along. So yeah. Um, and you've got to you've got to have like that bandit faction, and you have the ability to go and join the bandits because like that players will go mad over that sort of shit. Like having the ability to actually join the bad guys, like yeah. Well, the bandits kind of, I mean, they seem to me as almost like the answer to the early um, marauders. Um, mm, yeah, you know, just without all the the ge- physical degeneration and that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, which is pretty cool, but. Um, yeah, I'm thinking back to all the stuff that they just showed, and I, I actually honestly don't think there's one game that I'm not at least keen to check out. Um, oh, I mean, yeah. maybe Commander Keen. Like, I, I'm not that fussed on Commander Keen. I, I love that it exists. It's not necessarily my cup of tea. Like, yeah. My kids might play. I don't know. But um, <laughs> I like that they did it. I think that's cool. But it, it, yeah. it looked really, really slow. Mm. Um for like a, I, I kind of expect that since it's a real time multiplayer uh, game, or it has that capacity to be that. But it does, it didn't look a lot like Commander Keen either. It feels like it's just kind of using the IP. Yeah, totally. And like you, like you jokingly said, right? Like, oh yeah, no, that that rich Commander Keen lore to pull from. 
Oh, we've got to go and reference all the Commander Keen stuff. Well, I mean, how um, many Commander Keen games were there? I, I think there was at least five or something back, way back yeah, in the day. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. So, I, I mean, maybe there is some stuff that... And I, can't, I cannot say that I've played all of them. Like, I, I would have played through at least a couple, but yeah. they would have been some of the super early ones. Um, yeah. I mean, mind you, the, the best part about that reveal of the Commander Keen thing was the song they were playing, like... Mm. And the, the lyrics for it were freaking great. <laughs> mm, yeah, absolutely. This, this is aimed at kids, but kind of super not aimed at kids. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. They, they cut uh, off from saying fuck. So. <laughs> yeah, true. And that, that certainly wasn't a rule for them with the conference because they had a few oh, pre- presenters God, no. not caring about that at all. So they, uh, they uh, The Microsoft conference had uh, like bleeping, basically. Like they wanted that to be family friendly, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but that was very well. You could you can't have a family friendly Bethesda conference and show do. You can't. No, you cannot do that. And, and <laughs> hatcheting Nazis in the back of the head and all that kind yeah, of stuff too. Yep. I mean, Bethesda yep. games in general are not that kind of like pitch younger audience. Yeah, they're just not. Like, yeah. Um, which does which does make the Commander Keen thing kind of interesting in that respect. Like. Mm. Because that looks like a game for a younger audience. Like I, I, I look at that game as like that's not for me. Hmm. Um, but like it, it, as a mobile game, it totally makes sense for you know a, a parent is going to be like, oh man, I played Commander Key when I was a kid. I'm going to put this on my phone and give it to my kid. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. and here you go, you can play this for a little. Yeah, um, like that makes total sense to me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. Everything else is basically like this is this is very adult. And you you also right like I, I was not really that keen on Elder Scrolls Blades. Um. On, on mobile but on switch like mm. i'm i'm totally down with giving that a shot yeah um because like it's another it's another elder scrolls game it's like the elder scrolls rpg i'd actually really like to see how it actually plays but controlling that on a on a mobile phone i'm not keen on that yeah. but on the switch like totally different yeah definitely um i do yeah. like that so, you know the perpetual online worlds that um bethesda are, are creating a lot more often these days um as opposed to just the pure single player um sort of once-off mm. experiences the, the more that time goes on, the more I'm seeing a lot of those um, traits we've seen with Ubisoft as of late, where, where they have this double down commitment to everything that they release for online multiplayer, that they're, yeah. they're not just going to leave it. Like if, if there's issues with it, they're just going to keep building and keep tweaking and keep iterating. And so that mm. you know it's going to be good eventually at some point. Um, yeah. And I mean, sucks that it's not always on launch. Typically, you know, yeah. obviously that's, <laughs> that's kind of the, the big criticism that we've had for them in recent years, but... I mean, if you do feel regret for going out and spending, you know, money picking up like a new copy of, say, Fallout 76 or whatever it happens to be, and then, mm. you know, at least eventually at some point you'll feel like that wasn't wasted. You can go back and almost sort of rediscover the game with a whole bunch of stuff that wasn't there at launch. It's not not the perfect scenario, but it's a hell of a lot better than them dropping it. So Yeah. Mm. I mean, like, um, I, I think Destiny is a really good example of that, especially Destiny 2 and, and how, like, the game, like, rethought everything about itself when forsaken came out mm. whereas the expansions before that were basically like you know it was almost like fillers and they knew what the problems were but they needed a big expansion like forsaken to to make the game better they needed a good um, runway to really take a yeah. go at it yeah yeah and, and then and then shadow keep is another really good example of that like i'm bringing up don't bring up destiny mm. um but like you know they're, they're again basically saying these are things that we don't like about the game we we don't like that it's basically a first person mmo um, without the RPG, so we're adding in the RPG elements, and that's something we want to fix. Um, I want to see Fallout seventy six do that, right? Mm. Like, like, and it seems like a step in the right direction to basically be like, yes, we fucked up by not having NPCs in the game and not having those really good role playing mechanics by having conversations with characters. Mm. So we're going to fix that by now they're in the game. But the, my major question is like is this like two or three settlements worth of NPCs or are we going to see the whole environment, you know, actually become alive with NPCs now? Because if it's just like a couple of different areas that now have NPCs, but the rest of the world's still dead. Yeah. That would that, not that be great. Right. Mm. Yeah. It, it would be a step in the right direction, but it wouldn't go far enough. And the game, the game needs that. Um, it, it needs that destiny to forsaken moment where it can completely reinvent itself. Yeah. Um, and, and basically say, these are all the things that were wrong with the game. We are undoing all that stuff. And this is how we're going to approach things instead, basically. Fallout's definitely tricky with the um, population levels of things like that because they, they've got mm. this teetering point where it, by adding too many NPCs or those sort of elements in, you, you move away from it sort of feeling and acting like a wasteland. 
Yeah. So you, you you got to strike that balance really right for it to add value, but yet not feel like what you were just describing, where we have the existing map, which you know remains barren, and we just have these new elements just around the borders or like in a yeah. new cluster somewhere. So if it's stuff that maybe actually moves around and roams around um, and has like a designated path between some of the major settlements and you can encounter them in a few key locations, depending on, you know, mm. whether you're lucky to run into them or time of day or something like that, that would be cool. Um, but I, I think most of those major settlements probably only need like one or two interactable sort of characters yeah. just to, you know, make it feel more worthwhile, add more value. People are moving in. Exactly. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, and, and like I, I'm, I'm thinking of like there's that there's that first little town you you arrive at when you when you first leave the vault mm. um, with the chapel in it. Like throw some NPCs in there. Yeah, totally. Like, you, you you get out of the vault now. Look, he, there's NPCs here now. They can start. You, they can be running around the town and just like you know doing the whole canned um, animation they had in Fallout Four of just standing up against a wall and hammering against it. Like, but that shit will make it feel like, hey, this thing's growing. And then when they net go and release another bit of free DLC, mm. it could be like that town's now changed because you had all these NPCs there running around doing stuff, right? It's yep. going to grow. Um, mm. Yeah. I guess mechanically uh, they just have to be careful because they can't have NPCs in areas where hostiles would screw up the quest yeah. line by killing them. And, yeah. and you definitely don't want a situation where like you've got mutants sort of um, running in um and like scorched or something running in mm. and the NPC is not engaging them at all because they've got their predefined yeah. <laughs> path that would be so dumb so that they, they have to drop what they're doing and start shooting totally basically. yeah, yeah. I, I mean like as a, as a player that's not necessarily a bad thing like having the capacity to run into an area and be like oh here's a safe zone because i've got npc backup just tiny pockets like, yeah yeah just mm. tiny pockets of that would be really good but um yeah like uh, the, the whole the whole problem i had with fallout 76 was you know, you, you compare it to Fallout 4 and Fallout 4 feels like a wasteland, but it feels like a wasteland that's lived in. Mm -hmm. Whereas Fallout 76 feels like a wasteland that people used to live in and you've arrived after they've all died. Yeah. And and it's like literally like five minutes ago, this person was breathing mm. um, and then they had a heart attack before I turned up because their corpse is here and fresh. Yeah. So like, totally. that, that was always kind of like this, this uh, cognitive dissonance inside of Fallout 76. Like if it was all skeletons... Mm. I would not have a problem with that. You'd, you'd basically be like, yeah, this, this place has been freshly bombed out. But instead, it's like they, they couldn't really let go of of having that storytelling of somebody was just here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, you, you had a lot of, oh, you know, we had raiders in this area, but they've all been wiped out now. Um, and it's just this mad robot that was controlling. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so you find raider corpses around, but you don't find a living raider, which again is just like, well, if there's dead people, there's got to be live people too. Mm, mm. Um, That's the biggest whereas, problem conceptually with the scorched as well. Yeah, yeah, because they they seem like humans that have been infected by this sort of virus yep. over a period of time, not like you've just woken up a day or a few hours too late in the mm. vault and come out, and then it seems yep. like months have passed, which can't be the case. Like it's yeah. I mean, like, the whole thing with the Scorched, like, the Scorched would also be a really good uh, explanation for why nobody's there, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you could get out of the vault and basically be like, everybody that was alive has become a Scorched, and they've been Scorched for, like, months now, mm -hmm. you know, before the vault doors even opened. Um, and so you don't find those raider corpses on the ground because the raiders became Scorched. Yep. Um, and you can find indications that people were there. But, it's again, it's just this cognitive dissonance of, you know, which... What was the story they were trying to tell? You know, mm. um, like, do they want NPCs have been in the world and, or do they not? Because if, if NPCs were in the world, then sure. But you can't, it's all these different mixed explanations. Like, oh, yeah, there were raiders here, but they all got killed. Yeah. And, oh, oh yeah, you know, there, there, were, there were civilians here, but now they're all scorched. And yeah. it feels like it would have been better if they just kind of settled on, on one thing. Yeah. Or, like, I, well, I don't know about that. Like, yeah. Especially with the Scorch, because I think there's enough of that in the game already. You don't want to double down oh, any further yeah. on that. Yeah. Yeah. No, like, it's more to the point, like, again, it feels weird in Fallout 76 running around and finding fresh body. Mm -hmm. That's that's my biggest problem with it. Like, yeah. Um, it, it feels like- You're always just a moment too late. Yeah. You're always just a moment too late to actually find someone. Mm -hmm. And when you start exploring the world enough, it's like, well, geez, this happened again. Mm -hmm. You know? Like, whereas if I was running around, it's like, oh, here's a bleached white skeleton. Okay, I, 
they were not alive five minutes ago, right? Like mm. I, I'm way too late to have seen them. But it was always just like, oh yeah, you you you, you could have actually met somebody that was living, but they just died. Yeah. <laughs> Be a little bit faster next time, you you jerk. Uh, so yeah, so I like I like the fact that they're bringing NPCs in. Yeah, they're, they're they're traveling from out of town and they're coming over. It feels like that that's ripe for potential with um, like the the player settlements. Uh, and the way that player settlements worked in Fallout 4, because mm-hmm. that was my favorite part of Fallout 4, was was making a really cool settlement and then drawing people in to live there. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah. And so having that in Fallout 76 and and being able to like expand your settlement or or you know, um, I think we were discussing it when we were first playing about you know how cool it would be if we could actually put together our camps mm. and make a larger zone and just be like, okay, well now I don't have just a site that can only handle my house. Yeah, I have a site that can handle a small colony because we've grouped together to make this thing a thing. That'd be a really cool feature for uh, solo players too, if you could actually yeah. recruit NPCs to party up with you for a, a session. Yeah. yeah, that'd be really really cool. Hmm. Um, and wasn't that one of the things they mentioned um, with with blades? I, I can't remember which game they had said that you could actually go and see other people's towns or something. Yeah, it was blades. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like. Uh, that sounds really cool. Mm. Whether that's like kind of like a Animal Crossing style sort of build up your own little mm. ecosystem and people that can then visit it or not sort of situation. Yeah. Yeah. But um, one of the biggest what the fuck moments um, for that uh, press conference, I think, has to be Ghostwire. That, uh, yeah. Wow. That looks fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. From the makers like of um, Evil Within, too. That's, um, yeah. Mm. It, it's, it's like a game with horror themes, but it's not a horror. And and that's like right at my app. Like I can I can play that. I don't know. Um, I, I, have, I think it's totally going to be a horror at some point. It'll it'll be a horror, mm. but it won't like it, it's a horror where you have power. Like you're empowered to fight monsters. Mm-hmm. Like okay, so it's it's the difference between uh you know I could play Silent Hill, right? Sure. I could play Silent Hill games because you have some capacity to deal with the monsters. Alien Isolation scares the shit out of me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That ever present threat. Hmm. Yeah, it's like that. It's that. It's that present threat, and you don't really have anything to deal with the threat, right? Mm-hmm. Like you can you can scare it off or whatever, or you can you can draw it away, but it's always there, and it's this looming existential thing. Just you know, oh, uh, there's a sound coming from their air vent. Well, I just sharted myself. Yep. Time to close the game. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. It, it does look like a very cool story that um, you know wants to be told, though. Yeah. Yeah. The um, like, oh. suspense sort of uh, stuff. And what were they talking about? Um, the the lady on stage was um, saying that uh, you, there's a bit of investigation involved where you actually have mm. to determine whether stuff is actually like occult and um, supernatural or it's not. Yeah. So maybe some people it- trying to um, sort of get away with, you know, making it like, seem like it is. on purpose. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It sounds like you're investigating the, the, the disappearances and there's some people that have faked it. Mm, mm. Um, or, or there's like... There's occult things going on, but then there's people that might, yep, they might be getting murdered, and then you know, oh yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, but I, the thing I liked about that is basically, hey, look, you know, uh, all these people have been yeah, just just vanished and left only behind their clothes. You're playing a guy uh, in Japan that's carrying around a bow. This is Avengers Endgame. Mm. <laughs> yeah, You're it totally. As, yeah, as soon as they showed him there, I was thinking, "Hang on, that that's exactly like the Ronan reveal. That's exactly what that looks yeah. like." Yeah, yeah. It, I, I, it was I so it. close; it was almost a little too on the nose. I thought. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, but that would have been working on that well before Endgame was a thing. I, I bet they were probably annoyed when that when that actually turned up in cinemas. It was like, oh god. Oh, totally. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be interesting um, sort of uh, listening to some of the other live coverage to see how many people pointed that out, actually. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but I like that, though. Like, I, I, I think it's going to be really, really interesting. Mm. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, it, it could be it could be aliens. It could be ghosts. It could be any number of things. Like, it, from, from what I was seeing in the trailer, um, I was getting some real Thin Man vibes mm. um, from the from some of the guys walking around, like their spindly fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I'm, I'm actually super interested in the game. Yeah, cool. very cool. All right, well, we could probably leave it there, I think. Um, so we've got the uh, PC gaming conference coming up at, uh, in about three hours, which I'm planning on jumping on for. 
um, seeing yep. what. Uh, I will not be here for that one. No, no, that's it. I'll, I'll have a, a bit of a chat to that and see what's um, coming out. PC gaming conference is always a bit of a mixed bag each year, so yeah, yeah. yeah. Every now and then we, we, we get we some cool stuff. Hmm. I mean, like it's it's now backed by Epic, so oh, true. Yeah, yeah. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out with with that in mind. Hmm. Um, decently big year for PC I, gaming, all things considered. So yeah. Yeah. Um. Actually, so there was a piece of news um at the Microsoft conference that kind of makes the PC gaming conference one to uh, quite interested in. But the fact that um, Metro Exodus is coming to Xbox, mm. um, so the Epic exclusivity has been broken already. Oh, wow. Essentially, okay. Um, yeah, like, and it's available on Xbox Game Pass today. Oh, okay. So it, really sudden um but it'll be interesting to see if there's any sort of mention that at uh pc game show I, probably not mm. i don't imagine there will be unless there's um, um planned sort of uh dlc content coming or something like that yeah but, or, or it could be a matter of like maybe microsoft are actually doing something with epic um mm. but that would be strange they, they have competing store fronts on pc so i, I don't know true yeah i don't um, microsoft don't seem to care too much as long as their products are getting out there so yeah, I mean they're going to be yeah. putting stuff on Steam, so, so that kind of lends itself to that view. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, we'll check that out in just a few hours. But um, yeah, if you've been watching along, thank you very much. Hope you've enjoyed the uh, the Bethesda E three E three press conference. <laughs> There's been enough doom in there for you, but uh, yeah, we'll be back covering more stuff throughout the week. Just check out our Twitter for updates on uh, when we're going to be running streams. Um, unfortunately, due to the uh, the bizarre time differences, we're not, we're not going to be catching every single press conference. Mm. Uh, the Ubisoft one in particular tomorrow is at 4 a.m. again, so um, yeah. I will <laughs> maybe get up for that. I'll see how I'm feeling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll uh, post up updates later, but uh, make sure you check it out on uh, at Party Loaded Show on Twitter. And uh, check back to the channel here and we'll put, pull all the updates together into the uh, schedule down below. So um, that's it. Thanks, Matt. It's been good. It's been good fun. It has been good fun. Yeah. New games. E3 hype. All right. Anyway, that's it for now. Thank you very much for listening and uh, we'll catch you for the next stream. Bye. Gotcha.